fire a spread of lasers. Incoming! What happened? Aft laser turrets report an attacking battle star. Fire aft mega lasers. At your fingers is the weapon. The lasers, photon bolts, and the particle beams. Hey, wait a minute, this is just like back home. The type of laser beam is slicing into the saucer section. They are now locking lasers on us. Lasers? Yes, sir. Lasers can't even penetrate our navigation shields, don't they know that? They're carving us up like a roast. Forward lasers, lock on. Locked. Fire. So can you dodge lasers in space? Now lasers, of course, are made up of photons, little packets of light that travel really fast, at the speed of light, in fact, which is jolly fast. Nonetheless, because space is big, really, really big, it still takes quite a long time to get around. So for instance, it takes about seven minutes for light traveling from the sun to get to the earth. In fact, what the hell? You are now traveling from the sun to the earth at the speed of light. And I'm just gonna put that in one little corner because eh, it's gonna take its time. Unlike, of course, in say, for instance, Star Trek, where it takes a little more than the time of a dramatic pause for not only for a missile to get to the sun, but for you to see the changes that it's caused there. Whereas, of course, in reality, you would have minutes, you would have time to get a cup of coffee or something before you would see any of the effects. Now, I know it's going to be shocking to some people, that even when it comes to Star Trek, they occasionally allow the practicalities of telling a good story to take priority over scientific accuracy and the laws of physics. And some people will take that worse than others. <laughs> He's gone. Anyway, where were we? Oh yes, can a spaceship evade lasers or are they just wasting their time? Now, there are some people who say these aren't lasers or photon-based weapons of some sort. And you know what? You might be right because if they were photon-based weapons, you wouldn't be able to see them at all because you can only see lasers when they scatter off particles or excite particles or something. So every now and again, you just get the random urge to do something interesting with three colored laser pointers and a snowstorm. And we get up into the sky. Red, green, and purple. Zoom right in for that. Okay. Red, green, purple. All converging on infinity. It's a trap! All the Jedi's are going to feel this one! Right, other than that, lasers are invisible when they're traveling through space. But then again, of course, you wouldn't get any of that poo 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 with the space lasers because sound can't travel in a vacuum either. Actually, that's not entirely true, because what sound is, is it's compression waves in a medium. And while space is a very good vacuum, there is still a very, very low pressure of mostly hydrogen. So sound will travel there, it's just it'll be really quiet. And further, the actual speed of sound in this near vacuum depends on the pressure and the temperature. The practical upshot of which is the speed of sound in space is actually pretty similar to what it is here on Earth. So you would be waiting a very, very long time before you would hear a very, very faint poo 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 after not seeing the lasers destroy something. But we're interested in lasers, right? Can you dodge space lasers? Well, yes and no. It all kind of depends on what sort of maneuvers your spaceship can do. I mean, if they're close enough they can see each other as spaceships, then targeting with lasers is a joke because the time between when you fire the weapon and when it hits the target is basically instantaneous. Comically so. So for instance, spaceships in Star Trek are comparable in size to airliners. You know, within a factor of four or something. So here's the Enterprise next to a jumbo jet, which also has a space shuttle mounted on it, the space shuttle Enterprise. Interestingly, the shuttle here was actually named after the TV series. 
Yeah, then this is all just so you have a, an idea of how big the vehicles are that we've put in space compared to the sci-fi spaceships. Now, interestingly, the Starship Enterprise was named after the famous World War II carrier Enterprise. And we must succeed. Let's make sure history never forgets the name Enterprise. Which, which is not this one. This is the supercarrier Enterprise. And it's a fascinating thing that the actual supercarrier Enterprise had a significantly larger crew complement than the next generation's Enterprise. Now, the next generation Enterprise was about 650 meters long. But for this video, I'm just going to make the approximation it's about a kilometer long because it just makes doing the mental numbers easier. So if you were maybe, say, for instance, 200 kilometers away from the Enterprise. Mr. Crusher, keep us within 200 kilometers of the Enterprise C. Coming to 217 Mark 1. <laughs> and the Enterprise D is a one kilometer in length, it would be tiny. Yeah, those ships are maybe 10 kilometers apart tops, not 200 kilometers apart. So if you're close enough to see the spaceship as a spaceship, it's comically close, maybe a few kilometers or miles, that sort of thing. And at that distance, there's simply no maneuvers that the ship could do to dodge the laser that wouldn't kill all of the crew. Because light travels about 300 kilometers in a millisecond. So even if the ships were 200 kilometers away, it would take less than a millisecond to hit them with a laser. So how far away would you have to be before you could dodge a laser? Well, let's take the Earth-Moon distance as a yardstick. I mean, the Moon is a good one because people have actually been to the Moon. And when they were there, there was about one second of lag between the people speaking and the other guys hearing it because the radio waves travel at the speed of light and the moon is about one light second away. And for the moon landings were faked people, no, that two second lag is not evenly spread out over the recordings because all of the recordings were done on Earth. Further, for scale, if you're on the moon looking at the Earth, America is about the size as the full moon seen from Earth. And the reason I bring this up is to give you a, an idea of what a reasonable sized spaceship might look like at one light second away. Now, remember, we had that size comparison of the aircraft carriers and the spaceships. Well, it turns out in Washington state, there are actually some of those super carriers moored up, which you can see from Google Earth. So if you zoom out to space and then to the distance of the moon, you get an idea of the size that a big spaceship would look like at that sort of range. Cool. So if someone was actually shooting at a spaceship going around the moon, could you dodge the lasers? Well, kind of. You see, lasers travel at the speed of light, so there's no way you could see it coming. In fact, the first thing you would know that you were being actually shot at is when you got hit. That makes dodging kind of tricky. But let's just say you knew someone was shooting at you. So one second is the time of flight of the laser. Cool. So the guys have to predict where your ship is going to be in about one second's time and lead the target accordingly. In fact, to complicate things further, the image that they see of your ship is actually one second old. So they actually have to lead the target by about two seconds to hit it. Now, orbital velocity of the Earth at the distance of the moon is about one kilometer per second. And for comparison, the speed of sound here on Earth is about a third of a kilometer per second. So you would have to aim about two kilometers ahead of the target to hit it. That's actually quite a long way to lead the target by. Surely you could dodge that, right? Well, let's say the targeting system is pretty simple and just plots up your course and shoots where you will be in about two seconds time. So you have to get your entire spaceship out of the way, which let's just say for ballpark numbers is 100 meters or so. And you've got to do that in about two seconds. But let's not care too much about a factor of two here. To make the numbers easier, let's just say you've got to get 100 meters out of the way in one second. So you've got to change your velocity by about 100 meters per second in one second, which is actually pretty tough. I mean, for ballpark numbers, the speed of sound here on Earth is about 300 meters per second. So you're looking at changing your velocity from rest to about one third of the speed of sound in just one second. Now, if you think that might actually be the sort of acceleration that would kill people, uh, you're about right. It's getting there. Humans on Earth, just standing here, have an acceleration of about 1G. That's about 10 meters per second squared. So your typical guy experiences weight here on Earth of about 100 kilos, which is no big deal. 
Now you jack that up to three Gs, 30 meters per second squared, and you're into the shuttle takeoff type accelerations where your body is experiencing a weight of about 300 kilos, which is getting pretty uncomfortable. Danger, proximity alert. Danger, proximity alert. Gravitational well detected. You are now approaching the Terran system at light speed. You may want to hold on tight in case we've miscalculated and we hit something. Hey, I can see my who from here. And that was it, traveling from the sun to the earth at light speed in real time. Now, where were we? Ah, yes, 10 Gs. At 10 Gs, your body experiences a weight of about 1,000 kilos, about a ton, which is, yeah, that's the sort of acceleration where we humans, being fairly intolerant bags of mostly water. Mostly giant bag of mostly water start to die. Bags of mostly water? An accurate description of humans, sir. You are over 90% water surrounded by a flexible container. Actually, no. We're about two-thirds water. 65%. I shall pass it on to Captain Picard. My love is a fever. Longing still for that which longer nurseth the disease. Well, either that or humans have gotten a little wetter in the 23rd century. I'm with Starfleet. We don't lie. Shut, 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 shut up, Wesley. Shut up, Wesley. Shut, 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 shut up, Wesley. Shut up, Wesley. So. I lie. I'm with Starfleet. We don't lie. I bribed men to cover the crimes of other men. accessory to murder and if I had to do it all over again I would seriously by the pale moonlight is just one of the most awesome episodes ever ah, sorry where were we oh yeah the accelerations that you need to dodge space lasers that is trying to dodge a laser being shot at you from this distance would likely kill everyone on the spaceship and this is, of course, assuming you can dodge effectively because the laser targeter just has to guess randomly where your ship is going to be in about two seconds time. And it's only a matter of time before he gets a hit. <laughs> that point is rather depressing when you consider. I mean, let's just say you're at the distance of the moon, which is about 400,000 kilometers. Let's say you want to get another 400,000 kilometers away to get out of range. And you're traveling about one kilometer per second, which means it's going to take about 100 hours, four days of dodging at near fatal accelerations to get out of range. However, there are three saving graces for everyone on that spaceship being shot at. That means they probably don't have to worry too much. The first is no one would be able to shoot a laser that accurately anyway. Because you see, to target a laser, the bare minimum you need to know is which direction to point the laser in. Even with laser guns, if you don't point them in the right direction, you're not going to hit anything. Have we ever hit anybody with these guns? I hit a bird once. So let's just say you're using the Hubble Space Telescope to target your laser. That's a fairly decent telescope. Its maximum resolution when it's pointed towards the moon is about 50 meters. So it's right on the limit of what one of the most advanced space telescopes could do. And that's an intrinsic limit, bear in mind. You can't do any better without a bigger telescope. You simply couldn't accurately target an object this small. Secondly, of course, lasers diffuse by a mechanism that's not dissimilar to the factors that determine the resolution limit on telescopes. So this actually has been done. You may know the reason we know the exact distance to the moon is because when people went to the moon, they left reflectors. Timing how long it takes the laser beam to go out and bounce back. Peter can precisely calculate the distance to the moon. So you can actually fire a laser at the moon and wait for about two seconds and a few laser photons of the right wavelength come back again. 
we may send out a thousand million billion photons, whereas coming back, coming back into the telescope might be 10. And if you time that accurately, you can get the distance to the moon. And so how will disperse are the lasers they fire at the moon by the time they hit the moon? About six kilometers. And even at that, it's technically challenging to hit this small area on the moon. And they're simply talking about detecting a few photons coming back, not putting enough photons on the target to destroy it. And, and of course, as mentioned earlier, lasers... They're now locking lasers on us. Lasers? Yes, sir. Lasers can't even penetrate our navigation shields, don't they know that? <laughs> Actually, I hate to get all uh, Star Trek on you, but if lasers can't penetrate your navigational shields, then you're either absorbing those photons, and if your ship's absorbing photons, it would just appear black, or it would be reflecting those photons, and if your ship's reflecting photons, it would appear silver. Mm, just saying. The regulations do call for yellow alert. Hmm, very old regulation. Lasers reflect quite well of nice, shiny things like, uh, yeah, say for instance, mirrors left on the moon. The practical upshot being, even if you had a laser powerful enough to destroy a ship going around the moon, all you would have to do is make it a nice, shiny ship. That would reflect, say, 90% of the visible light, and you would have to get a laser 10 times more powerful to destroy that ship. Ah yes, mirrors the arch enemy of the poo 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 magic laser bolts. Thank you for pressing the self-destruct button. This ship will self-destruct in three minutes. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Oh, we are going to get so much crap for that.